What's going on everyone? In today's episode, I'm gonna show you all a crop that a lot of you are leaving out of your garden at this time of year, but it's not only possible, but can be incredibly rewarding. We haven't done it in a long time. A lot of you have wanted me to try it again, and that's sweet corn. So in today's episode, we're gonna be planting a fall harvest of sweet corn. I'm gonna show you how to do it step by step. Let's go. So when it comes to sweet corn, you all have probably heard the term knee high by the 4th of July. And we're past the 4th of July and well, it's not even planted yet. So how are we gonna get this to work? Well, it's really simple. The first thing I wanna get you guys kind of aware of is the fact that the phrase knee high by the 4th of July only came about because that is from the first planting. Most people don't even mention that. That is very common and it's actually a really common misconception is because we often think that if our corn is not knee high by the 4th of July, that it's behind schedule or that we're not gonna have time to get it to ripen up and mature before the season is done. And that's just not true. Corn farmers, at least in our area, are planting corn well through the middle of July to guarantee a fall harvest of sweet corn. And they will stop harvesting sweet corn around early October, late September. And so we have a lot of time to get our corn up and growing with plenty of time to get it to mature by fall. The only reason why people think that is because of that saying, knee high by the 4th of July, and it has no bearing at all whatsoever on where your garden should be or where your corn should be at that time. Now this would be the equivalent if you really like tomatoes a lot, there could be a saying that says, you know, flowers in June, tomatoes coming soon. Just right off the dome, I came up with that. It's not an actual saying, although it's kind of true. We say these things because we're anticipating and very excited about sweet corn season, because if you like sweet corn, you can't wait for it. Local sweet corn is probably some of the best, tastiest things you can put your, your hands on that comes from the earth, in my opinion, at least. And so if you're really passionate about it, knee high by the 4th of July just kind of helps to build that excitement of your first, you're getting closer to your first corn harvest. It has absolutely no bearing whatsoever on if you plant your corn after July, if you still have enough days for that corn to mature and produce cobs and everything, you're still gonna have plenty of time left in your season. The, the rhyme doesn't really dictate where you should be is all I'm trying to say. So in this bed right here, we pulled up our garlic. Awesome harvest, by the way. If you haven't yet seen that video, go check it out. It was amazing. One of our best garlic harvests ever. We pulled up our garlic and we need a transitional crop. Over here, we had our cabbage. Cabbage is done. We pulled those up. We need a transitional crop. So rather than plant the usual transitional crop, I'm gonna plant corn. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to refertilize. Always refertilize. Corn especially is a crazy heavy feeder when it comes to nitrogen. So make sure you give a lot of nitrogen to your corn because they will thank you for it. So what we're doing is we're putting down trifecta as an all-purpose fertilizer. And then we're gonna follow up with some alfalfa pellets. We've already amended this soil behind us with alfalfa pellets and trifecta, where we had the, the cabbage. Cabbage is also a very heavy feeder. So we wanna make sure we refertilize. Over top of this bed here, we're gonna put about, I'd say about three to four cups of trifecta. A little bit goes a long way. Now that that's done, we're gonna take our alfalfa pellets and we're gonna throw down some alfalfa. And I'm gonna use probably about two to three pounds over the course of this bed here. And alfalfa is not only going to break down and help to soften the soil, keep the soil nice and loose, but it's also going to incorporate lots of nitrogen because alfalfa is rich in nitrogen as it breaks down. And that's gonna be more of a slow release throughout the season because corn is actually a grass, believe it or not. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is the amount of space you should be planting corn because a lot of people want a little corn patch, maybe like a container of corn. And while that might seem cute, it's not a, it's just not a fruitful endeavor. You're not going to have good success planting out a very small patch of corn. And that has everything to do with how corn is pollinated. So when you're planting out your corn, people always ask, what is the minimum size of a garden you should plant your corn into? And I would say a minimum of four by four. So four feet by four feet. And the reason why is because, yeah, it seems absolutely cute and adorable to plant out a little container of corn. The downside is you're gonna get really improper pollination. You see, when corn actually forms its tassels, it's wind pollinated. Those tassels contain the pollen that then drops down, gravity brings it down, and the wind will bring it and kind of wash the pollen over the silks. And it's really important that you have a large block of corn so that that pollen can adequately pollinate those silks. You see, each silk corresponds to a kernel on a cob. And if you ever opened those cobs of corn up and noticed a few that are kind of gappy or there's 
not one filled in there, that's from improper pollination. And that can happen sometimes when it's really hot, sometimes when it's really wet and cold, but it also can just happen if you don't have enough that's actually there to pollinate. So make sure you put enough corn into a space to pollinate everything properly, and you're gonna really do a whole lot better. The next thing to planting out corn that you need to know to have success is spacing. Corn is one of those crops you really cannot overcrowd. Now, in our garden, we talk about high intensity spacing and how important that is to cover the soil, protect the soil, so we can conserve water in the soil, keep it more cool, smother out those weeds. Those are all true. None of those things are still wrong with planting corn, but we need to make sure we still respect the space that corn needs. And so each row is gonna be spaced out about eight to 10 inches. And that's because corn has a very aggressive but shallow root system. That's why corn blows over so easily is because it doesn't root very deeply. It's actually very shallow because it's a grass. And so because it's a grass, it has a very shallow surface level root system. And so we wanna make sure that we only space out our rows about eight to 10 inches wide. And then each seed is gonna be spaced out about six inches apart. Now I'm gonna put two seeds per hole and thin because that way I have you know, guaranteed success in all my rows. But that means that in a four foot wide bed, we're only gonna get about eight plants per row. So you take eight times how many ever rows you get. And that's, that's why corn is, you know, <laughs> corn is sometimes a crop that I say, if you have a lot of space, it's a great crop. If you don't have that much space, sometimes consider growing something else. But I will tell you what, it's a fun one to grow. And that's why we're growing two beds of it, because of the fact that it's a little bit of a space hog. It is a little bit of a space hog, but if you wanna grow it and you're passionate about growing it and you're excited about corn, why shouldn't you grow it? Grow what you love, right? And so we're growing corn, not because, not because it's gonna save us a ton of money, but because it's a heck of a lot of fun to grow. All right, so now we're ready to plant our corn. Now, once you've got your soil amended, the, the furrow is made, we're gonna talk about corn. Now, corn seed can be planted a couple different ways. My preferred way is if it's already really warm like this, it's going to sprout pretty fast. In early season, we practice a method called pre-soaking. And that's basically where you take your corn seed and you soak it in water for about six to eight hours or until it doubles in size. And then once it's fully absorbed with water, it's going to germinate a whole lot faster in the soil. And that's because corn is really prone to things like rot. And that's one of the benefits of planting it later in the season is the soil is already nice and warm. Another great thing too, is a lot of the birds and the, and the animals and things that, that are hungry in the beginning of the season when there's not that much food, they've already really had their fill. And so it actually is sometimes even better and you have better success when planting it out later in the season. So, so things to consider. Yeah, it might not be the earliest corn in the world, but you're gonna have success. And isn't that what matters? And so I choose not to pre-soak my seeds. You absolutely could. You could still pre-soak them now, but I just choose not to because they're gonna germinate pretty fast. The next thing I wanna talk about is corn varieties. So you have four different varieties of corn. If you're interested in learning all about corn, go check out the video. I will actually post it in a card. Click that and watch that if you're really interested in learning all about different corn varieties because we just don't have that much time to talk about them in depth. But basically, you have a few different varieties available to you. I prefer to grow a sweet corn because sweet corn takes a lot, it's, it's a lot less time to harvest. If you grow something like a dent corn or a flint corn, those are drying corns and they have to be on the plant for a very long time, even after they fully mature, so those kernels can fully dry out. With sweet corn, you wanna harvest them when they're at low starch content, but peak water content. That makes them nice and crisp and sweet and delicious. And so with sweet corn, you're gonna find, you're gonna have a far better time planting out for a fall harvest, things like an early maturing variety of sweet corn. This one right here is known as ambrosia. Get it over at mygardener.com. We also have two other varieties of a hybrid sweet corn. Now this is not an heirloom sweet corn, this is a hybrid sweet corn. And we carry them just because they're my go-to favorites. But we do have a lot of other heirloom varieties as well. That's beside the point. Just stick to a variety of sweet corn, whatever that variety may be, because that way you're gonna have more success than not. All right, let's get planting. So when it comes to planting out your corn, it's really important that you plant it out in a location that gets nice full sun. We always say this, and this is a saying that it's pretty easy to remember. Roots, shoots, and fruits need full sun. If you're harvesting for the leaves and stems, you can handle part sun. So full sun basically means the sun can see you and you can see the sun unblocked for at least five to seven hours a day. Now, if it gets more than that, 
the corn is not going to complain. Again, it's a grass. The more sunlight it gets, the more energy it can produce, and corn is an energy factory. It absolutely just craves energy because it's a very fast growing grass. And so again, the more nitrogen you give it, the better it's gonna do, but also the more sunlight it gets, the better it's going to do. And so put it in a nice full sun location, and it's going to do great. Now that we've got our corn seed planted, we're going to follow back up and we're going to cover it up lightly. And then a lot of people ask this, what about pests? You might have mice, you might have birds, you might have deer and stuff that will come in and want those seeds. You can always take a piece of chicken wire, roll it over the top until those seeds sprout and then pull it off. A lot of times it's those newly sprouted seeds or the freshly planted seeds that animals like crows look for. And that's because once they sprout, it actually has a whole lot more nutrients in it. And so animals like crows, birds, right? They will hone in on those freshly sprouted seeds because not only are they easier to digest, but they have more available nutrients. And so oftentimes that is when your, uh, your plants are the most prone to be picked at. Once they sprout, you do have the, you know, the eventual raccoon that comes in and wants to harvest the actual cobs of corn. But at this stage right now, we're gonna cover them up, we're gonna water them in well. They should sprout pretty fast, but you can always give them a little bit, little bit of protection if you feel like they need it. And one of the final things to note here is how often we water. Now, corn does like it to be fairly wet, but it does not like to be sitting in water the whole time, otherwise the roots will rot. So what I find is that yes, corn is a fairly drought tolerant crop, but if you're growing sweet corn, it needs lots of water. And so how often do I water? Well, I water about once a week and I'll water about once a week as needed. If it rains, I probably won't water, but if it doesn't rain, I'm gonna give it a little bit of water just to keep that growth going, keep water going into the plant, because yes, it can survive if it goes dry. But what you'll find is the harvest, when you actually do pull the ears off the, the cot, or the ears off the stalk, I should say, those ears are gonna be really tough and very starchy, and that happens in a low moisture environment. So make sure you water your corn. Don't let it go dry just because, just because you know that it can handle dry weather. Um, you'll definitely benefit from a little bit more water. But then the other final thing I was gonna mention too are pests. Now, when it comes to pests, Corn can be affected by a few things. In the early stages though, not a whole lot of anything. You're not going to find a whole ton of hosts or pests that find corn to be a host plant. The one you might encounter are something like leaf miners. Those often affect the leaves of corn. Those are pretty impossible to prevent. You just gotta keep your plants healthy. Maybe intercrop a few herbs to kind of mask the scent of the corn. That's about all you can do in an organic setting. That's about the best you can do. So we don't typically have too much of a problem. What we do have a problem later on with are called silkworms. Now, not silkworms like the ones that, you know, spin silk, but they actually attack the silk of the cobs of the corn. And when they eat the silks, that eventually leads to really improper pollination because again, that is what is transporting the, the pollen down the silk to properly fertilize that kernel on that cob. And so if you have a, a grub eating that away, you're gonna have problems. For that, I use BT. I spray all my crops down with BT. It's a beneficial bacteria known as Bacillus thuringiensis. It is very effective and it's highly, highly effective at silkworms. And so make sure you use that uh, later on in the season. I wait until about two weeks after the tassels form and start to drop pollen. That is when I will follow up with BT because you don't wanna water or spray anything on those silks when they're just forming. You wanna wait until after they've been pollinated and then follow up with a little bit of BT spray and you should be great. So that is really all you need to know to grow corn well. I know a lot of you are probably gonna wonder stuff about like soil pH and stuff we would normally talk about in our growing guides. But when it comes to corn, they're really, they're not that finicky, right? pH can be slightly acidic to neutral. It's not that big of a deal. So it's not really something you need to worry all that much about. And then obviously like soil type, they don't like compacted soil. Make sure your soil is nice and loose. Again, they have a shallow root system. So having really deep, loose soil isn't that important. And so again, it's kind of a great crop to grow as long as you can work that top four to six inches of soil, get it nice and fertile, really fertilize it well, make sure it stays well watered especially because it's a shallow rooted crop. Make sure it stays well watered. You should be fine. And you should have some sweet corn by the end of fall. And uh, all your friends are gonna be jealous of you. So give it a shot. It's a ton of fun. I'd highly recommend trying it. Again, we're gonna plant this bed and this bed out with corn. So make sure you follow along, watch how it grows for us. 
and uh, yeah, be really exciting. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you all learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel, reminding you to grow bigger. Take care. Bye. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed, consider checking this one out. You'll probably enjoy it just as much. I want to thank you so much for your viewership because without it, this channel would not be as amazing as it is. If you haven't subscribed yet, it's free. Consider doing that. We upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, rain or shine. And if you need any garden tools, supplies, or seeds, check out mygardener.com. We got you covered. See you guys in the garden. Bye.